Hey everyone, Corey from Aquarium Co-op. Today we're talking about my top five bottom dwellers. So they're gonna eat off the bottom. A lot of people want cleaner fish. This is this list is for you. So in number five, I've got Geophagus. What does that mean? That means sand sifter or earth eater. That's what these guys are right here. They basically go down and they grab mouthfuls of sand or gravel when they get big enough, they sift through it and spit them back out. Kind of like you've seen goldfish do. They come in some different varieties, which is super nice. They get kind of large, six to 10 inches, depending on species. That's why they're number five. If they were smaller, I could recommend them more. Some of them can be very aggressive. Some are also super peaceful. Like these guys are middle of the road. Uh, whereas like a Jurapari, which we have down over here, which we have very few left, kind of as we sell them. Uh, let's see, where do we go? We've got one right down here. You can see him doing his action, right? You see him sifting the sand through his gills. That's what they do. They do that all day long looking for food. And they're going to keep that substrate turned over for you. And if you have a few earth eaters in your aquarium, you won't have to gravel vac anymore because they'll do it for you. Now, that being said, they can dig up plants a little bit unless you put big rocks around it so they can't dig into it. But they're going to do that all day long and be little worker bees for you. So that's my number five pick. My number four pick is a specific fish, not a family of fish. We're gonna, we're gonna slide way down here. Let me find where it is, right here, okay. It is the dwarf petricola catfish, also known as Cynodontus lucipinus. So these little guys are right here. They only get about three inches. They kind of swim like sharks. And uh, they're just super cool. Of course, they're hiding out because they're catfish and they're nocturnal, but they're great little cleaners. They eat off the bottom. They'll swim kind of mid-water and up when they're smaller, and they just look super cool. That's why I like them is people, when they buy them, they go, oh man, that's a cool looking fish. I like keeping that. They do best in little groups of like three or more. The only downfall to them is they're about $18 a piece. So they're not cheap, but they do stay relatively small. That's kind of nice. Um, so yeah, let's, let's move into group number three this is another family of fish and we're gonna go way down here to start out with my favorites of them they get the largest of course but that would be these guys clown loaches loaches are my number three i love them because in a big group when you do keep them in a big group of kind of like 10 or more they're super duper active now these ones they get huge they get like 12 14 inches or so but they will eat off the bottom they're good at cleaning you can see the substrate in here if you look at it See how there's all these little pits and everything around? That's because they're constantly going through it looking for food. So they're doing their job. Uh, but up here, we've got other types of loaches, like the coolie loach. They also do that. They stay much smaller. They get to about, you know, three and a half inches or so, not that big around. They do really well in planted tanks. And uh, in general, they're nocturnal. Most bottom dwellers are going to be. But they just kind of hang out and do their thing. Now let's take a look at a couple more, just so you get a, a sample size here. So here we've got... Dwarf chain loaches. This is my favorite loach uh, for planted tanks because they will kind of go up mid-water. You can get a school of them. The downfall is they're about 12 bucks a piece, but boy, are they personable and uh, active. They also will take care of any snail problem if you don't like snails, which I myself, if you're watching my other videos, you know I love snails. Uh, but, you know, and let's say that wasn't your variety. You're like, oh, I don't like that one that much. Okay, fine. Let's look at some zebra loaches. I like these too. They only get about four inches or so, and they've got that wicked cool pattern. Keep them in a group of three or more, and they'll be happy. You see some hanging out on the sponge. And yes, they are plant safe, which is great. So there you go. All right, number two. Number two is shrimp. And uh, I tell you why they're number two and not number one, because they can't live with everything. A lot of things will eat shrimp, so that's kind of a problem. But let's take a look at them. In here, we've got some cherry shrimp which just means they're red ones. Uh, if we scroll over here a little bit, we've got some orange ones. And then if we go to the last tank over here, a little bit low on shrimp at the moment, we should have some blue ones. And you can see some blue ones. So they come in a lot of different colors, which is nice. Uh, and they just comb through everything and they reproduce, they make more. Big fish will eat them though. But they're one of the greatest bottom dwellers and scavengers. They'll just keep, you know, you can see them everywhere, right? They can get in a, because they're smaller, they can get in the nooks and crannies and really help you out. And uh, here's a little bonus one. Didn't make the list because it's pretty rare and uncommon. But dwarf anchor catfish. That's kind of a cool guy. It only gets about an inch and three quarters. There's another one right there. So kind of an oddball. But then 
You ask, well, Corey, what is the number one? Well, my name is Corey. Can we guess? Corey Doras, right? So they come in so many different varieties, and that's a good thing. Like in here, we've got Hasbrosis, and they're nice and small. And we've also, there's other dwarf varieties, so they come in really small, but then also we've got um, the normal size. Like here we go, we've got salt and peppers. And then over here we've got albinos, which that's good as well. And if we keep scrolling down through the, the store, really, you see here we've got bronzes. Uh, we go a little bit more, I'm sure we'll find more. Uh, we've got the stir -bys, one of my absolute favorites here. We've got the orange pectoral fins and all the spotting. Another real popular one is going to be the uh, Julii Cori. All that reticulation pattern, big favorite. Another real popular one is the Panda Cori. These ones don't get as big, they only get about two inches, where a lot of these other ones will get about three inches or so, and with like the bronze getting three and a half. Then you've got some rare oddballs like the, or or the green laser here. You know, definitely a more expensive of a fish. And you know, something like that, that fish right there is 17 bucks, whereas these pandas are only six bucks, and the Julii's are six bucks as well. And they do best in groups of, you know, really six or more. That's why some of the dwarf species work out a lot better for some people. Here we've got Corydora axelrodi. These are kind of just a nice, different one. And there's literally a couple hundred different Corydoras. So they're an armored catfish, so they typically don't get beat on by all types of community fish. They do great. They can live in a little school. They scavenge around. They clean the bottom. And they're personable and likable. That's my, my last tip I would give you. Only buy bottom dwellers you actually want to keep as a fish. Don't just buy a cleaner fish. That's like buying a dog to clean up your floor at your house. It's like, well, yeah, they're gonna eat crumbs off the floor, but then they have to go to the bathroom. Kind of same problem, right? So, you know, make sure you want it as a pet, not just as a cleaner. So, hope you enjoyed the list. Check out our other list. Check out our species profile. Check out what we do every week, and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.